Mixing is one of the most important aspects of creating high quality professional sounding beats. You could already have a really good sounding beat, but if you mix it incorrectly, then it's just not going to live up to its potential. You're not gonna make as many sales. Artists aren't gonna wanna go on the beat, etc. And today we're gonna go over really everything related to mixing your beats. Q, effects, leveling, your master channel, etc. The real key with mixing though is kind of combining all the things I'm gonna show you here today. Some of the things are gonna make a really big difference that you're gonna hear immediately, while others are gonna make a difference when you kind of add them all together. And if you skip one of these things, then your beat's just not going to be mixed as well as it could be. So pay close attention and let's get into it. So right here, I have an unmixed version of a beat I made a few weeks ago. This was in my Gunna tutorial. Here's how the beat sounds without any mixing, no leveling, nothing. All right, so it sounds terrible. First thing you're gonna wanna do when it comes to mixing is just leveling sounds. In terms of just turning it down, you can add everything to your mixer. And in order to do that, highlight all of your sounds right here. Then go click on your mixer channel or click F9 on Windows and then do Control Shift L and it'll populate this entire rack with all of your sounds. Now, in the case that you use like some samples or something like that, then you'll have to just click on the sounds, go to your mixer channel, and then just do control L. Now I'm gonna show you two ways to level your beats. First, the way that I currently use, and then another trick in case this seems a little bit too complicated that a lot of people swear by, and you know, some people are completely against. So typically what I'll do is I'll just solo each sound. So let's just start with this guitar right here. I usually like these instruments to hit around like 12 or 15 dB. Then I'll start adding in the other sounds. So I think they sound good together right here. Just want that kind of in the background just when it comes to your instruments i do like to do around like 12 to 15 db however it's really going to be based off of the kind of type of beat you're trying to make so there's no like just set number that you're going to use for each of these i could totally change up the sound and make this arcade sound be the loudest part now it sounds completely different and now we're gonna do the same thing for the drums. The loudest drum is going to be the kick. It's really the driving force in your beat. And then right after that, it's gonna be the 808. Sometimes I'll have my 808 louder than my kick. It really just depends on the beat. Some people will say you have to have the kick be the loudest part, it cannot be the 808. But a lot of 808s kind of have elements of kicks. A lot of them are combined with kicks. I would say it just really depends. Beat. And right here, I just went and centered it. So it's right down the middle of the mix. I'm just turning down the 808 so it's not clipping. Generally, you do not want your sounds to go over 0 dB. So listening to this 808, I think these instruments are a bit too loud for my taste. So I'm going to turn these all down. So that's one of the best ways to just make your drums just stick out and cut through the mix is just to turn down your melodies and they're going to hit a lot harder because they're not competing with those sounds as much. Next sound that I feel should be the loudest in terms of your drums is your snare or your clap. So I think this is a pretty good level right here. Next sound we have is the hi-hat and I kind of like my hi-hat to sit more in the background. My open hats and my percussion instruments, I usually like them to kind of sit in the background a little bit more. Specifically with open hats though, what I'll usually do is turn it down a little bit and then play with this spread right here. And this just pushes it out into both ears a little bit more. Compared to how we started, comparing to 
there now. Just this leveling alone has made like a massive difference. I made this beat just using sounds from my One Shot Bank Da Vinci, as well as my drum kit Graffiti. So if you like these sounds, link in the description to check those out. Now let's say this is like overly difficult for you, but one little trick, and some people don't like this trick, I think it works totally fine though in my opinion. If you go in, and in the description I'll have a link that you can go and download this, and you use what's called pink noise, just basically sounds like an old TV or something. Put it on your channel right here turn everything way down like literally off turn this down a little bit so it's not so loud and now what you're gonna do is you're going to slowly pull up each instrument until you can just barely hear it over this pink noise right here so you can just barely hear it now and then you're just gonna do that for every sound here. Once you've kind of gone through and done that, pull everything up all at once once you've gone through every sound and you should have a pretty good sounding mix. Next thing I wanna talk about is just like panning sounds. For example, I have two guitars playing right here. To make the guitar stand out a little bit more, you can just go in and pan it to each ear just like slightly. also go in and do this for your hi-hats and get like cool effects or just different drum sounds down here and do note pan I can get some pretty cool sounds on this hi-hat roll right here I'll just go in and do something like this just have it go every other versus just a little thing you can do. I would recommend not doing this for kick or your 808s, like for sure. You want those down the center of the road. All right, so next on to EQ. And EQ is one of like the best tools that you can kind of use. It's really a way to shape sounds, take away sounds that you don't want, and also just kind of give some separation in your mix so things don't sound like they're clashing or overlapping. First thing I wanna talk about is just kind of some cleanup EQ. I got these two guitars from my One Shot Bank Da Vinci and then this art arcade sound what you're gonna want to do is open up an EQ cut out around 200 Hertz and that's just to make space for the 808 so that's what we're gonna do right here for each of these sounds you can kind of play with it and see oh maybe can I leave some lower stuff I usually don't need to though and then let's do that for the other sounds Now to give you a better example, just because these kind of higher frequency sounds already aren't really operating in these lower areas, let me just knock one of these sounds down an octave so you can see the difference. All right, so this is with the effects. Now if I take this off, let's hear how it sounds. They're just clashing and you just hear that mud. I like using Fab Filter just because it's very like visual compared to like a Fruity EQ or something like that. But Fruity EQ works really well for this. It's all just kind of like what's more visually appealing. There is a free plugin called TDR Nova, which is really good and it kind of offers a visual representation that's very similar. Now, some other ways you can use EQ to kind of clean up your mix is, let's just say we have this guitar right here. So we're gonna sweep through and see if there's any frequencies we don't want here. So maybe we could take that out. Stuff like this is gonna make like a minor difference typically, unless you have like tons of unwanted frequencies in a sound. This is more so something if you do this with all the sounds in your mix, that's when you're gonna notice like the biggest difference. So it's really up to you if you wanna do it or not. And if you wanna take it a step further in terms of like EQing and correcting everything, people will go in and with every single drum is they'll go in and let's say you have a clap for example, and I'm just gonna solo the clap so you can hear it better. And just cut out everything that doesn't make the clap sound any different. So, clap still sounds the same, right?
didn't really lose anything. And so they'll go in and do that with every sound, every drum, etc. And the idea kind of behind it is it'll get rid of any clashing frequencies and it'll just lead to a really nice clean sounding mix. I'll do this if I'm like uploading a song to Spotify, but if I'm just like sending someone beats or whatever, then no, probably won't do this. Another thing that you should do for like corrective EQ is on your 808 or your bass line, and you just wanna cut out between like 20 and 30 hertz, as these are frequencies that the human ear can't really hear, and they just kind of absorb some of the energy from your 808s and your bass lines. Around like 30 hertz is fine. You just wanna make sure it's not taking too much away from your 808. Versus. So maybe a sharper slope right here. Now let's talk about some EQ enhancements, ways you can use EQ to kind of enhance certain sounds. And for example, one thing you can do is you can use it to boost your 808s in your kick. So let's just do it for the kick right here. times what people do just so the kick kind of sticks out a little bit more through the 808 so I pulled the kick up what was it around 61 Hertz and so over here at around 61 Hertz it might kind of pull this down a little bit if I wanted to just boost my 808 maybe go in look over here Sometimes even pulling up some of the highs can make it stick out a little bit too. Now we're gonna go over some like basic effects you can use to really enhance your mix. First thing I wanna talk about is reverb. It makes things sound a lot more like alive and real in my opinion. But let's say we wanted to add some reverb to this sound right here. Fruity Reverb 2 is great. Versus. This makes it sound more live. Plenty of good presets for you to use here as well. One thing I would recommend doing is using this low cut knob right here and cutting out everything like looks like 500 because you don't really need a bunch of reverb on the lower sounds. Now, if you want like a paid plugin, my favorite reverb plugin is this Hollow Vintage Verb. I really like this. Another great effects plugin when you're mixing is just using some sort of distortion plugin. It's really great to use on drums as it'll help them kind of cut through the mix a bit more. So for example, on this 808, if I wanted, Fruity Fast Distortion, just a stock plugin right here. paid plugin for something like this would be something like capitator or thermal and i actually mix a lot of the drums that i created in this drum kit with the capitator just so they would stick out in your mix without you having to you know put this effect on and i know some of these tips seem like really small and you're like i can just barely notice a difference but like i mentioned earlier it's all about everything kind of combined that's where you're gonna notice like a really big difference. Now, last thing for effects, if you wanna put all of your effects on multiple different sounds, one thing you can do that's really easy, just highlight all these sounds. So it's just these drum sounds right here. Just go to route to this track only. Any effects you add right here will affect all of your drums. So I can do something where I just add reverb to all of the drums. I ended up taking the 808 off though. Typically it doesn't sound very good on it. Play with this knob. So 
So next, let's go on to the master channel. One thing I like to typically do though personally is I like to use a compressor. Feel free to use Gritty compressor as well. So I just use this SSL compressor. It's really simple and easy to use. And basically what this compressor is doing is it's kind of like gluing the mix together. Um, these are just the settings that I use here. Turn the attack all the way to 30 milliseconds. Turn the release so it's super fast. So here's how it sounds with the compressor and without. lacks a little bit of punch. So the next thing you can do is you can add an EQ. A lot of people will pull up some of like the lower end, like where the 808 and kick are hitting, pull up some of the higher frequencies as well. Feel free to find it out in the comments on this last one. So right here, I just have a soft clipper on the master. This is what I'll typically do, but what I've been kind of playing around with, and a lot of people will say, nope, never do this. Don't put your limiter on your master, etc." You go to your limiter and you just turn the ceiling all the way up and then play with the saturation knob a bit. You can get a pretty good sound as well. And people say this is just another form of like soft clipping. It's really up to you. So this is with a soft clipper. This is with the limiter. Let me know what you guys prefer. Definitely check out some of my other videos, guys. Follow me on Instagram, and I will see you soon. Peace.